The Buddha once said, your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own unguarded thoughts. Consider this for a moment. How often do we allow our own thoughts to create turmoil in our lives? Imagine living in a state of unshakable peace, where nothing external can disturb your inner calm. In this video, we will explore 10 powerful Buddhist principles that, if practiced with intention, can lead you to a state where nothing can affect you, no matter what life throws your way. Let's begin with the first principle, mindfulness. Mindfulness is being fully present in the moment. The Buddha said, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. By cultivating mindfulness, we train ourselves to observe our thoughts and feelings without being swept away by them. Imagine encountering a situation where someone speaks to you harshly. Mindfulness allows you to pause, recognize the emotions rising within you, and choose a measured response instead of reacting impulsively. This simple practice can transform how you engage with the world, making you less susceptible to external disturbances. Start with simple mindfulness exercises. For example, try mindful breathing. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and focus on your breath. Inhale deeply through your nose, hold for a moment, then exhale slowly through your mouth. Notice the sensation of the breath entering and leaving your body. Do this for a few minutes each day. One common challenge is dealing with a wandering mind. It's normal for thoughts to arise. When this happens, gently bring your focus back to your breath without judgment. Another challenge can be finding time to practice. Integrate mindfulness into daily activities, such as eating or walking, by paying full attention to the present moment. The second principle is the understanding of impermanence. Everything in life is transient, emotions, circumstances, relationships. Buddha taught, all conditioned things are impermanent. Work out your own salvation with diligence. When we grasp the truth of impermanence, we stop clinging to things as though they will last forever. This realization frees us from the fear of loss and the pain of change as we come to accept that everything is in a constant state of flux. To practice impermanence, pay attention to the natural changes in your surroundings and personal experiences. Reflect on how things evolve over time. Practice letting go of attachments to outcomes or possessions. Focus on accepting change rather than resisting it. Engaging in meditation that focuses on the transient nature of thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations. In your journey of practicing impermanence, you may feel difficulty in accepting the transient nature of life, especially with significant personal attachments or desires. You may also find that you are fearful of change and it causes distress and discomfort. Remember that these challenges are natural and only by trusting your process of practicing impermanence can you eventually reach a space where you live the idea of change being a natural part of life and growth. Closely linked with impermanence is the third principle of non-attachment. Non-attachment is the practice of letting go of our desire to control, own, or cling to anything. Buddha said, you only lose what you cling to. Consider this parable. A man traveling across a desert comes across an oasis. He drinks deeply, but when it's time to move on, he realizes he must leave the oasis behind. Clinging to the oasis would hinder his journey. In life, our attachments, whether to people, possessions, or outcomes, often cause suffering. Practicing non-attachment helps us flow with life rather than fight against it. Observe your attachments and how they influence your thoughts and actions. Recognize when you're holding on too tightly. Once you are mindfully aware, practice letting go of exercises, such as decluttering your space or releasing expectations. Focus on appreciating what you have without clinging to it. You may find difficulty in letting go of emotional attachments to people or outcomes, or may find that your desire for material possessions can be strong and challenging to overcome. Don't be too harsh for letting go as a process. Start with small symbolic acts of non-attachment, like donating unused items or allowing a loved one to make their own choices. There's a story of a monk who was known for his serene demeanor. No matter what happened around him, whether he was praised or insulted, faced with abundance or scarcity, he remained calm. 
When asked how he maintained such equanimity, he shared a parable about a river. The river, he explained, doesn't cling to anything. It flows freely, unobstructed by what it encounters. It doesn't resist, and because of that, it's unstoppable. This parable beautifully illustrates the power of non-attachment and acceptance, principles that allow us to move through life's challenges without being hindered by them. Now, let's explore the fourth principle of acceptance. Acceptance is the practice of recognizing and embracing the reality of the present moment without resistance. The Buddha taught, pain is certain, suffering is optional. Pain comes from life's inevitable difficulties, but suffering arises from our refusal to accept them. When we accept what is, we cease to struggle against reality, allowing us to find peace even in difficult circumstances. Practice meditation that focuses on accepting your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Allow yourself to experience emotions fully without resistance. Use positive affirmations to reinforce acceptance, such as, I accept things as they are. Regularly reflect on areas where you struggle and embrace them with compassion. A common challenge is to resist difficult emotions or situations. To overcome this, develop a daily practice of acceptance, such as writing down things you are struggling with and consciously letting go of resistance. The fifth principle is compassion. Compassion is the practice of extending kindness and understanding to others, as well as to ourselves. Buddha said, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. When we practice compassion, we soften our heart and mind, reducing the harshness with which we judge ourselves and others. This softening shields us from bitterness and resentment, which often arise from interactions with the world. A powerful way to build compassion is by engaging in self-compassion exercises, like positive affirmations or compassionate self-talk. Extend this practice to others by performing acts of kindness or volunteering in your community. Ensure you practice self-care and set boundaries to avoid burnout. Consider a situation where a friend is going through a tough time. By practicing compassion, you offer support and understanding without expecting anything in return, which strengthens your relationship and helps your friend feel supported. The sixth principle is wisdom. Wisdom is the insight that comes from understanding the nature of reality. The Buddha encouraged us to seek wisdom, saying, no one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Wisdom teaches us to see beyond appearances, to recognize the deeper truths that underlie our experiences. It helps us navigate life with clarity and discernment, preventing us from being missled by illusions or false perceptions. Seek knowledge through study and reflection. Learn from mentors or wise individuals who can offer perspective and guidance. Reflect on their advice and integrate it into your own understanding. Engage in discussions and apply your insights to daily decisions. Be mindful that you are limited by your perspectives and cannot see beyond your immediate viewpoints and biases. Be open to seeking diverse perspectives and commit to ongoing learning and self-inquiry. Approach challenges with curiosity and a willingness to grow. The seventh principle is equanimity. It is the principle of remaining balanced and calm, regardless of what happens around us. He who is freed from likes and dislikes and is tranquil sees things as they really are, Buddha taught. This principle is about cultivating a state of mind where we are neither overly elated by success nor crushed by failure. We understand that both are part of the ebb and flow of life and neither should disturb our inner peace. To practice equanimity, develop a daily meditation practice focused on balancing your emotional responses. Reflect on situations where your reactions were extreme and practice responding with calmness. Let's return back to the monk's story. We can see that his equanimity was not about indifference, but about understanding. Like the river, he recognized that life is a continuous flow of experiences, some pleasant, some unpleasant, but none that should dictate our inner state. The monk's serenity came from his deep understanding of impermanence, non-attachment, and equanimity, principles that allowed him to remain unshaken by life's inevitable ups and downs. Now let's discuss the eighth principle of right speech. 
Right speech is about speaking truthfully, kindly, and with purpose. The Buddha said, better than a thousand hollow words is one word that brings peace. In our modern world, where words can easily be used as weapons, practicing right speech protects us from the harm that careless words can cause. By choosing our words with care, we not only avoid unnecessary conflict, but also cultivate an environment of respect and understanding. Before speaking, pause and consider if your words are truthful, necessary, and kind. Avoid gossiping for it can potentially cause harm to the subject and you. Remember, gossip can ruin relationships, erode trust, and create suspicion. Whether it's in friendships, families, or workplaces, mean-spirited gossip rarely does any good. It usually just ends up causing pain and hurt feelings. The ninth principle is the principle of right action. Right action is about living ethically, making choices that do not harm others or ourselves. The Buddha's teachings on right action guide us to act with integrity, kindness, and compassion. In a world filled with opportunities to act out of self-interest or impulse, adhering to right action grounds us in principles that keep us aligned with our values, ensuring that our actions contribute to our well-being and the well-being of others. To practice the right action, follow these two steps. First, regularly reflect on your daily actions and assess whether they align with ethical principles. Second, before taking action, set clear, positive intentions. Ask yourself if the action will cause harm or benefit others. In your journey of practicing the right speech, you will be challenged by situations where there is temptation and pressure to act unethically aid for personal gain. In such situations, you should be able to fall back on your strong ethical framework or on your mindful practices that can keep you grounded in your values. Finally, let's consider the practice of gratitude as the tenth principle. While not always listed among the traditional Buddhist principles, Gratitude is a powerful practice that aligns with the teachings of contentment and non-attachment. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have, fostering a sense of contentment and peace. It's a practice that protects us from feelings of inadequacy, envy, and dissatisfaction, allowing us to find joy in the present moment. Start a daily gratitude journal where you list three things you are grateful for each day. This practice helps shift your focus to positive aspects of life. Another way to practice gratefulness is by regularly expressing thanks to others for their contributions, kindness, or support. A simple thank you can strengthen relationships and create a positive environment. Remember to take a few moments each day to reflect on the positive experiences and aspects of your life. This can be done during meditation or as a part of your daily routine. It can be difficult to practice gratitude during challenging times or when facing difficulties, but remember that gratitude is one of the greatest tools for reframing negative situations. Consider a situation where you're dealing with a significant personal or professional setback, such as a job loss. Practicing gratitude involves focusing on the support from friends and family, the skills you've developed, and the opportunities for growth. By acknowledging these positives, you can maintain a hopeful and resilient outlook as you navigate this challenging period. To embody these principles, let's begin with a simple mindfulness exercise. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. As you breathe in, silently repeat, I am present. As you breathe out, repeat, I am at peace. Notice the sensations in your body, the thoughts in your mind, and let them pass like clouds in the sky. This practice of mindfulness is your anchor, grounding you in the present moment and protecting you from being swept away by external circumstances. Next, reflect on the principle of impermanence. Think of something that is currently troubling you. Now remind yourself that this too shall pass. Nothing in life is permanent, and by accepting this truth, you free yourself from the fear of change and loss. As we close, let's revisit the core principles we discussed today. Mindfulness, impermanence, non-attachment, acceptance, compassion, wisdom, equanimity, right speech, right action, and gratitude. Each of these principles offers a pathway to inner peace and resilience, allowing us to remain unshaken by the inevitable challenges of life. 
Remember the parable of the river and the monk, and strive to flow through life with the same grace and understanding. Buddha's teachings are not just ancient wisdom. They are practical tools for modern living. Reflect on these principles, integrate them into your daily life, and notice how they transform your experience of the world. If you found value in today's discussion, I invite you to subscribe, share your thoughts in the comments, and join me on this journey of inner peace and growth. What principle resonated most with you today? How do you plan to incorporate it into your life? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, remember that peace is within you, always.